Right, man, hope you're well. Thank you so much for your patience. Apologies for the last few days. I've basically been in, the Arizo in Arizona and the US for um, a bit of winter training with a tour player. So apologies for the travel, literally going from the UK to the States. I've really just, um, just been running out a bit of breathing space, but I'm now back at it. So thank you so much for your patience. It's um, really appreciate that. And thank you so much for the extra videos. So what I've got here is I've got a couple of videos that you sent through. And to be honest, they're all, as, they're all pretty showing me the same thing, which is great. So we've got your face on view and we've got your down the line view. And really what we're discussing here is some conversations about how you essentially move. And I want you just to be aware of, just from a very simple bias, you are the way in which you move, and I'm gonna reference how your body moves in this conversation. The way in which you basically set up to a certain degree and the way in which you move your general skeletal system, your pelvic system, how you move is generated by FA bias intent. Now, whether that is it purposely built or whether that is just the way in which you naturally move against a golf ball, you are by definition, I would say on the, on a further spectrum of a fade, hence why potentially you're seeing pulls, pull cuts, slices. And if you do see a draw, I can imagine it starts fractionally straighter than you want to, and maybe just curves over to the left-hand side of the field. Now, for me, the first thing I want you to be aware of is just the natural biomechanics of where you're aiming with your upper body. So the ideas of maybe shoulder line, forearms, everything potentially aiming too far to your left, okay? Now, if I just zoom on into the skeletal system here, just have a little look at how you're sort of set up here. The system I'm using here basically defines, and if I go to a face on view, we're gonna see that pretty much the system I'm using here is gonna define the red areas, the red dots as your lead side and the purpley blue dots as your trail side. So you can see you've got two sides of your golf swing. Now from a face on point of view, we can see that your red shoulder and red elbow are all aiming, I would say, perspectively left. Okay, so number one, if I just draw a straight line up from your trail shoulder, just as a very simple, like very simple win that you can make immediately, is that's not set up with the idea of our shoulders aiming at least 15, 16 degrees left of target. Because that's, you're basically fighting a losing battle immediately. So just from a perception of just understanding the simple complexities of how we attend and set up to the golf ball, that's gonna highly dictate how you can move, okay? So the first point on call I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump in front of the camera and just give you that reference point. And honestly, if we make the appropriate adjustments of how you set up your upper body, how that reference the golf club, versus through your grip, I would say that you're gonna see the immediate and probably the most beneficial part of this lesson just from a set perspective that might seem easy, but less complex than maybe you're after. But right now we've got to ask ourselves: is the player set up correct relative to trying to remove some of the biases in your golf swing? I'd say you've got some simple, easy wins to attest to there. Okay, so what we're gonna do there is we're just gonna spend a bit of time, I'm just gonna spend sort of five, 10 minutes in front of the camera dialoguing that to you. So hopefully that can present you some really, really simple gainable gains to take to the golf course without applying any swing mechanical alterations. Now from a swing mechanic point of view, from the way in which you move, essentially what we're looking at here is a player that typically, and if I just take you to the top of the backswing position, actually gets some great rotary skills. So what I mean by that is, you see some good hip turn, good trail leg extension, diaphragm moving, shoulder turn working beautifully. And to be honest, you get a wonderful amount of what's known as handle depth. Now, handle depth is just the measurement of where the hands essentially start life. And if I just pop a small line here on your sort of trail side of your handle here, by the time you actually return to the top of the backswing position, you're actually seeing quite a, let's say, a very, very suitable amount of handle depth. So typically on tour, draw bias players, draw bias players essentially are able to attest and sort of create anywhere between eight to 12 inches of handle turn or handle depth in this scenario, which is just the idea and measurement of the hands going behind you in the backswing. Now, as a result, the golf club's actually gone a little bit across. So this is all testing well to a player that is and should have the ability in many cases to shallow the golf club out, present more of an inward path, those sorts of ideas. The piece that I want to discuss with you is how you transition, so how we move and when the transitional piece occurs and how you create torques and twists in your downswing that presents you with the opportunities to strike the golf ball appropriately. I would say you're a wonderful candidate to understand that you actually move in a really beautiful way in the backswing, but it's your downswing piece that is costing you your reliability and functionality that you'd like to see a little more often in your golf swing. Now, the way in which you move on the downswing is to instantly and quickly rotate the body open. 
Now, what that means is, again, let's just go back to the quick sentence at address. Why this would be super appropriate for you to understand is you've basically set the parameters at address, right? You've set the shoulder line way open. So your natural, what you're going to want to return back to is more open than you need to. So what you're setting the basis and bias up of where your neutral is at address is far too open, which means your body is calibrated to get back to that, if not a more open impact. Ideally, we want to present a skeletal system at halfway down when the chest is square. So what I mean by that is if I just take you up to the top of the boxing position, and I said to you, if we can recognize that this is the point when your shoulders are relatively square at address, okay? I want to return your shoulders back to a relatively square position just past P6. Because I think you're always going to be a fade bias player. I'm not telling you you should draw the golf ball. In fact, I honestly think drawing the golf ball would be a very strong distance away from you at this present time. It might be something you're able to attest to and get to at some point. But right now, I think this would be the most appropriate change for you to make is just to become less fade biased. So rather than being aggressively fade biased, just subtly fade biased. So you can start to use some of the natural start lines and understandings of your game, but being less aggressive with it. So if I just take you to the top of the backswing position and come on down, I'm going to ask you to think about when your shoulders get back to that square point. So you can see there you're going through at least, I would say, at least two foot of movement before the shoulder line is square. Okay, so you can see how much twisting you're going to have to do to get back to square. If I just take you to the top and bring you halfway down, for me, your shoulders are spinning open far too quickly. Okay, so by the time you get to delivery, you are as rotary as it gets. So subject to maybe a vertical that I've left there, let's just pop in an understanding of how open your chest is at the moment of impact. So your shoulder line, which has no ability to rotate, shoulders, everyone talks about shoulder rotations, your shoulders are a ball and socket joint, but the idea here is that the torso is rotated 50 degrees open at the moment of impact. Now this is a wonderful skill to have, to be this rotary, but when somebody's this rotary with the upper body, essentially you're only ever really gonna have an out to in club path. You're only ever really gonna have a very stable club face, and you're probably only ever gonna see a bit more of a cut than a draw. Now, the big giveaway here is where your feet start to align post-strike. I mean, your, your trail foot is pointing way over to the right. The way in which you're just generally finishing is so rotary, you actually lose a fraction of a bit of balance. So for me, this is all about understanding how to transition. So I think what we'll do is we'll just realign your setup at address. So just making sure that your address position is less left. And in transition, rather than you naturally wanting to peel this lead shoulder open early, everything rotating super, super early, we're just going to have to delay it a touch, get you feeling like your back's at the target for a longer period of time, pushing pressure in the ground for a longer period of time before you rotate. We'll just help you generate a much more appropriate start line. So today we're going to work on setup and how you transition to stay a little bit more closed relative to the target, still retain that fade bias pattern, but way less chest open at impact.